My name is Houston Davis. I'm with the University System Office staff, and I'm so glad to have all of you here tonight. And I think it needs to be said before I start, how about that corn souffle? Oh. <laughs> you could start with it as your vegetable and end with it as your dessert. I mean, good sugar intake there. So um, we are really appreciative that all of you have taken uh, of your time, uh, not only to come and be a part of this conversation, but to in many ways become a part of this initiative that's, that's known as Affordable Learning Georgia. Uh, in some ways, it's, it's not just something that's been created in the last year or so. This is a result of a great foundation of work that's been underway uh, in the state of Georgia for years uh, in partnership with, with others around the country and even around the world. Uh, what we're excited about is that we've got some, some perhaps focus on this, we've got some support for this, and I want you to know that from Chancellor Huckabee, from myself, from the regents, uh, from presidents and, and others, this is an absolutely a high priority for us. There, there probably are fewer things that we will do uh, and engage in in the next couple of years that we'll, we'll do more to think about what it is in terms of providing true access um, to higher education and, and driving quality of learning and making uh, that transformative property of education available to the public. Um, I, in many ways, think that we're, we're exploring the possible, uh, we're exploring the probable, we're talking about what's far-fetched, but either way, in all of that conversation, uh, you've got the pledge from the board office uh, that we are going to be committed to create the innovative space for that conversation, that thinking, and whatever are the calculated risk that we're going to take to step forward. We'll do that together, and we'll do that being firmly behind you. Not way behind you, right behind you. Um, in some ways, we know there's a nice healthy tension between the status quo and innovation. I mean, in some ways, uh, it's constantly what we're doing in higher education, especially in an era right now in which there's so much change. We're trying to, to pick from all those things that we know work well especially those things that work well for serving about 50% of the public that comes through our doors and higher education works for them and we get them across the stage. But then we're thinking creatively and we're, we're thinking critically about what is it that's helping or preventing those other 50%, especially those among those 50% that are in acting good standing when they stop out. Those are the ones that break my heart and I know break many of your hearts when you hear about students that are making progress toward a degree and they don't make it across the finish line for a variety of reasons that don't have to do with their commitment and their ability. In some ways, I think that a lot of our conversation here is in the name of those students as well. We want to identify opportunities and you are going to be helping us to identify opportunities, to set some priorities, to better serve students, to really think about how we uh, at the system level and how the state of Georgia uh, can enable uh, many of the great ideas that are emerging from our faculty and our staff and the support resources that surround you. Um, please help us to sort through, help us to identify what that next new idea is going to be. We are really, we talk all the time about if we can find some way to bring high quality opportunities together with affordable solutions, then we absolutely positively will do something to influence student learning. Okay? But you got to remember, you got to have the high quality and you got to have the affordable, the value, to be able to make certain that we're doing something, especially for that other 50%. Um, I appreciate all that you do. Uh, we are excited tonight uh, to have Cable Green with us. Uh, we, we couldn't have probably asked for a better thought leader in terms of what is possible, what's probable, and what's far-fetched. I mean, in some ways, that's the world in which he operates. Um, it's exciting to have an innovative thinker such as him. Let me introduce Cable, and then I will get out of the way and figure out how I'm going to get some more of that corn souffle. <laughs> Cable Green is the Director of Global Learning for Creative Commons. It's a nonprofit for open access. Cable works with the global open community to leverage open licensing, open content, open policies, and the affordances of digital things generally that can significantly improve access to quality, affordable education and research resources. His career is really dedicated to increasing access to educational opportunity for everyone around the world. Cable's a strong advocate for open policies that ensure publicly funded education materials are freely and openly available to the public to pay for them. Previously, as the Director of E-Learning and Open Education for the Washington State Board for Community and Technical Colleges, he led a project to build and share 
the highest enrolled courses under a CCBY license. They called it the Open Course Library. Cable also served previously as Director of Technology for the Ohio Learning Network and is the Director of Educational Technology for the Ohio State College of Pharmacy, where he built Ohio State's first online doctoral degree. He earned his PhD in Educational Psychology at Ohio State University, his MA in Communications from OSU, MPC from Westminster College, and a BS in International Affairs mm -hmm. from Lewis and Clark College. Cable, it's an honor to have you here.